from 2014 onwards till date i think congress is the assembly of people who are happy to be unhappy <laughs> no revolt look at you see you matlab wo aise hi khush hai it doesn't vanish in one day so it's you know it has thousand cuts yeah. it bleed white yeah. so congress is bleeding white what does prime minister modi have that rahul gandhi does not have you see a uh, confidence b uh, you know communication uh, c recognizing what people want 24 chodo 29 pe ab dhyan do I mean that's not a sporting spirit that's you you're not even trying to compete true but uh, has the congress given up on this election so really? you're saying rahul gandhi is the first nehru gandhi mem- family member who's a political failure I mean, I'm not saying is what else I'm saying. So, the Gandhi family का सदस्य मंत्री नहीं बनता, वो तो प्रधानमंत्री बनता है. So you will see this uh, this illusion of grandeur is fed constantly. It's very intoxicating, Barka. Rashid, you have spent so many decades reporting on politics. You're a prolific author. You're a keen student of politics. If you had to look at the, let's say, the state of the Congress in 2024, compared to 2004, after which the Congress was actually able to be in government for a decade, what is the key difference between the state of affairs within? that congress and this congress is it just that circumstances have changed the rise of modi has stumped the congress or is the congress actually different today from what it was then ah, thank you barka all of it actually uh, you know the big difference one word uh, self confidence self belief in 2004 uh, before 2004 actually the success of so to say congress and formation of up etc they were also very uh, uh, kind of there were a lot of depression was there there were a lot of anxiety was there because nobody was expecting frankly that sonia gandhi led this congress would win but then they were together there was a kind of unity mm. they were uh, you know there was some kind of great determination was there uh, from 2014 onwards till date i think congress is the assembly of people who are happy to be unhappy <laughs> no revolt look at you see you matlab wo aise hi khush hai as you could say and there is a more this thing there is a lot of you see remember congress is a very old party they are past masters of uh, i would say you know palace intrigue hmm. so while they are not losing i mean they they are not winning elections they are very good at you know playing this uh, you know politics uh, that court politics uh, pitting one against another petty you, politics petty politics and of course the court politics is also very important you look at any election so there is you know what malika arjun kharge who is official congress president he is trying to do and something what rahul gandhi is trying to do mm. and what uh, sonia gandhi is trying to do these are the three so to say power centers mm. if you look at you know you have studied history and you have seen how it happens you look at the last 100 years of moguls they were in power uh, so to say they were in power but they were very weak there were a lot of all those sayyid brothers and there were a lot of intrigue was there ottoman empire you know you look at any empire which is on the decline you know lot of it just it doesn't vanish in one day so it's you know it has thousand cuts yeah. it bleed white yeah. so congress is bleeding white it's not an empire but it's a whole you know it's a big political party a very big tent in nutshell what is happening look what in nine, the congress decline actually if you see it it started from 1967 i mean this is a very jaded i don't think so but that's what people say when there was a first time formation of non congress governments in a uh, seven eight states so in 69 there was a huge split in the yeah. congress yeah same thing happened in 1977 when we were young but still that kind of split took place huge split two third of people left imagine back to back very humiliating defeat uh, 2014 and 19 no split mm. nobody left the congress so there was you know all kind of so people are like 60 people or i have uh, you know documented 15 you know former chief ministers who have left so everyone 15 former congress chief ministers have left the congress since 2014 all of them and i think except for anwarah taimur and name Tar- a few name and, a few uh, see it's, it's it's like it's a total uh, who's who type of thing you you have gulam nabi azad you have captain amrinder singh you have sm krishna you have that old uh, this thing narendra tiwari ajit jogi uh, um, uh, uh uh digambar kamat uh, several of them i mean uh, and of course this ashok chavan and uh, the three from uh, you know no, i mean from the northeastern states three from goa so 15 former chief ministers have left the congress since 
since 2014 and they were and imagine who is a chief you know chief minister is a very important post they are a yeah. real, real mukhiya head of the state mm. you know they are a potential prime minister as in case of uh, mr narendra modi and if they leave they go away with lot of baggage and this is a this is a problem with the congress party now the thing is when you talk to a lot of people and most many of them are you know academic they tell you a you know sort of history of congress mm. history of congress is that you know sonia gandhi tried to you know function with a remote control and this and all happened my problem is i look at the story of congress the story of congress is very different from history of congress so in my view for instance narsimha rao was a maverick a lot of people i heard you know people say in a very glowing way i mean i i'm just stumped because i have covered the same period and same thing you don't, you, I, don't, you don't think his the credit that is given to him today is deserved uh, not at all in fact he is the he was the one person of course you see nurse, see the people i look at politicians in flesh and blood i have written a book also called uh, you know uh, leaders politicians citizens where i profiled all of them were yeah. now dead so all of them you find that they were of course they were very fine people they were men of intellect and all but they were also mavericks they were you know they believed in putting on people pranab mukherjee look at pranab mukherjee look at bengal congress today it's all sort of you know his mess hmm. nobody would say this so the history is written no, they will never there say are, there are no perfect people in public life no, not, right people do make mistakes no no making that mistake that doesn't take away from their contributions no. to public life you you absolutely right. making mistake is human and it's possible it happens with all people uh, you know people apologize but what i'm saying is when you do it knowingly for instance pranab mukherjee when it comes to bengal he never allowed in an inch of you know place uh, for mamta banerjee because he didn't like he thought that she is uh, like a you know riff raff kind of person uh, so i am saying that he stone walled you know he, she could not become a state party president she could not you know she could not grow politically or politically yeah. in the in the congress now this will not be documented it always seen as if mamta left because of gandhi's do gandhi's were nowhere in picture when mamta gandhi uh, when mamta banerjee left the congress you look at jagan mohan's case now what was the issue about uh, you know when why why sir died uh, uh, the andhra pradesh united andhra pradesh chief minister his son wanted to become chief minister now rahul gandhi who's a dynast and we like to you know sort of you know uh, uh, blow a lot of you know punch throw a lot of punches on him now, his argument was and so was sonia gandhi that it would be setting a wrong precedence if a chief minister dies then why should a chief minister's son or daughter should become chief minister i know now, but gandhi is hardly in the position to make that argument well, you, right you can say that i am saying but look at that look at that kind of that is the paradox that here was a man who didn't want you know vyasar uh, successor to be vyasar son in this case being jagan and he paid a huge price and continuing to pay a price so when you try to be sort of you know a, a democrat ha huh, you suffer okay let's let's come back to basics you said this is a party that is presently happy to be unhappy and i think elsewhere you said ki congress mein ab ek tarah se internalized message ye hai 24 chodo 29 pe ab dhyan do I mean that's not a sporting spirit that's you you're not even trying to compete true but uh, has the congress given up on this election when we say congress we must define who's a congress okay. we look at rahul gandhi this is a real problem actually a yeah. lot of people including some of us don't understand uh, you know the real uh, issue that we keep saying history of congress and story of congress story of congress is very fragmented it's very tragic also you have a full fledged you know congress president uh, in malikarjun kharge very fine man comes with a lot of experience can do consensus can do alliances and all but for every decision he has to look towards uh, you know rahul gandhi now rahul gandhi is very clear in his uh, sort of say thought process he doesn't not want he's not hankering for power he thinks that 24 is not for him yeah but and as sachin pilot said on this podcast he said we are not an ngo we have to win elections precisely so now the question comes barkha whether uh, Gandhis are failing the Congress, or Congress is failing the Gandhis. Explain Now, that because every Congress person worth uh, his or her salt wants Rahul Gandhi to become Priyanka Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi, the Gandhis actually, to become Prime Minister to represent the political leadership. Yeah. Okay, and they have this illusion, illusion of grandeur to you know we're doing that, and that's why they are there in politics. Remember, all three of them have been reluctant prayers. Uh, you have also you had interviewed Priyanka when she had said never, never. You 
of say so never join politics the prisoners of circumstances they are very reluctant players and they don't like this power uh, you know no, uh, or politics. They, or you could argue they like the power but not the responsibility no that's what i'm saying so they 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 are they are they, are, they fancy themselves as custodians of power they are not you know power wielders and that is a problem so rahul gandhi if congress gets 150 lok sabha seats uh, which looks very unlikely he will uh, be a contender but short of this half of half of 272 which is a, a you know simple majority mark he he doesn't want to be a claimant he or for the very entire congress party but that's not that they can go uh, you know to public and say it so this was for the regional parties the non bjp political parties to come up and have uh, you know take a shot yeah. and we have seen a lot of times these regional parties have come together with the, of course help of a dominant national party to beat uh, a big character like indira gandhi like uh, atal bihari bajpayee like uh, even narsimha rao so this all has happened so what i'm saying is but whole is script actually you know as uh, uh, sort of uh, gone have because nitish kumar who was architect of it and he was trying to then nitish kumar realized that you see he is not going to be made prime ministerial candidate he was not he But could not even not? become convener my question is they even dragged their feet for months the india alliance in making him convener Right, they dragged their feet on making Malika Arjun Kharge a prime ministerial contender. That was another option. That was saying they part is very actually. Who's the they? The yeah. Congress. No, no. So Congress, who's there? That is why I'm saying that there is a lot of palace entry going on. There is a lot of thing that whatever you do or say or think, there is a counter argument. So in a way, you know, it is a very democratic party at this point of time, and only thing it is good at is to you know scuttling other persons, you know, chances or prospects. has the bharat jodo yatra the bharat jodo nyay yatra the the second leg of rahul gandhi's yatra been a huge mistake obviously there is no doubt about it but rahul gandhi does not think so because a he is not a prime minister he is not taken a ownership to make you know congressman it is people like sachin pilot and lots of so i would say hundreds and thousands of you know congress people who have this kind of expectation so there is a mismatch on what rahul gandhi so what thinks. does rahul gandhi want Rahul Gandhi thinks that there is a you know there is a scope uh, that you know the uh, of a mass awareness you know campaign and so that people know what they are they must so know the right So is he trying to be does he see himself as the JP of this moment What I I mean you can say anything but no, I'm saying, honestly Rahul I'm Gandhi trying to understand I'm trying to understand large. see he resigned on 25th of May 2019 taking yes. responsibility of defeat of 2019 since then he has not sought that role it is his mother it is is you know everything looks a uh, you know uh, a kind of contradictory and paradoxical but that's how it is he is not uh, you know angling for it but he is also a person of uh, i would say flesh uh, and and blood and he is also you see the problem in this congress is that psychopathy is is you know is they are so good at it that you don't realize so you look at a kind of you know that ecosystem that rahul gandhi has his advisors and wherever he goes yes i mean he was there recently in lucknow got a lot of crowds so when you get that kind of response it makes you it's very addictable it you know you it makes you think that oh so many thousands thousands of people loving you so you are very important but surely the numbers tell a different story the numbers in each election including the recent assembly elections have been devastating for the congress but rishi i want to understand this is rahul gandhi fighting a battle that is different from the battle that his party is fighting absolutely because party is looking more and of course all of us as political journalists also we look at things in numbers how many seats uh, you know the performance part of it rahul gandhi is on a very different kind of page he thinks that uh, this is this is not how you know society should be but one of the points you've made uh, and you've often made this point is that his own beliefs he is not able to sell to his cadre yes explain so, that yeah so barkar this is the biggest problem actually and that's where rahul gandhi actually is very again a big paradox because he accuses uh, this thing uh, of his uh, political opponents of you know muslim freedom of speech etc and there a lot of truth in it but his own you know he is a very poor communicator to and his own cadre to his own cadre he is not example? communicating enough because see he has a view and i have reasons to believe he has lot of views for instance uh, you know his whole form mission about this caste senses he was not able to sell it to his own uh, you know rank and file and cadre the congress as you know has a very upper caste profile particularly mm. the 
top party leadership etc and in thinking mm. caste has been in again in academic sense has been considered something adversarial now if he has taken a total shift from you know considering caste as an asset and there should be you know caste based senses and caste based uh, you know reservations etc he has not taken his party in confidence there is no sort of say aicc or you know regional summits or communication he does not have a band of 150 people uh, who are who are, who are, who are Are, who are, who so you're saying there's a dissonance between what he wants to make the selling point. Always, you look at Chokidar Chowdhury. Hey. At that point, time, uh, people like even Chidambaram and uh, Ashok Gehlot and several of them had reservation because he coined this term and he came up with it. But maybe they had reservations because every time Rahul Gandhi has personally attacked the Prime Minister, it's actually boomeranged. Well, that, that's of course that is what I'm saying. That is why you have political party. What is the meaning of you know Congress Working Committee? What is the meaning of Congress Parliamentary Board? It is not to say is he greater than Jawaharlal Nehru? Is he greater than Indra? Because they would hear, they would bring a you know thing on the table and bring it on the negotiating table or in the CWC or in the Congress Parliamentary Board. Why is Barkha? I'm asking you why there has been no Parliamentary Board since the death of you know Rajiv Gandhi? There has been no. parliamentary board in the congress party since rajiv gandhi's death yes staggering and if you look at party constitution every second para second paragraph talks about congress parliamentary board but don't you also think narsimha rao did not do it i yeah. tell you because he was scared because he was scared of all those rajesh pilot and uh, you know yeah. uh, madhav sindhya and karuna karan and so that they would you know dominate him so i can i could imagine that a maverick like uh, pv narsimha rao could do that but then sonia gandhi you know she did not form uh, a, a congress parliamentary board rahul gandhi did not do it even now it's not being done So basically what you're saying is forget communicating to the voter forget mobilizing a narrative among the voters he's not able to sell his narrative to his own party Yes, because he is not communicating. See, we do not know what. He, see, he says that all media is, uh, you know, bias and all. This is all very flimsy. This is this is the thing that is being sold to him by his sort of, you know, advisors who may have some compulsions to be saying it. You look at you know the newspapers from uh, Kerala to Kashmir, and I can give a lot of names. You look at even Gujarat Samachar in uh, in 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 Ahmedabad. Yes. You see, they are so 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 critical of uh, 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 you know Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and for the matter. for the you bjp is surviving so there so many publications are there he is bharat jodo yatra is not given one single interview to so to say to mainstream media yeah so this is if just because there are 14 anchors which he thinks or congress party thing why are you punishing rest of them the other point is apart from uh, the the fact that boycotts have a always been there and b never worked um and because there's always a work around for both the politician and the journalist and life goes on his own colleagues have not followed the boycott of those 14 anchors right his own party colleagues Absolutely. kamal nath amrinder singh before he left they, they gave interviews to whoever they wanted to because the end he doesn't realize he is rahul gandhi you see when he says something it is reported maybe some people are twisting it at all uh, yes. and all i am not denying that part but the but media I'm, does not blank out rahul gandhi and there is no yes. way it can be blanked out in yes. kind of social media the kind of That's presence right. it there it is just this also comes barka in the ambit of you know arrogance in a way because you know you are not you do you don't think that uh, uh, malaya manorama uh, uh, telegraph duck and herald tribune i mean i can go on naming you know public and these all i'm giving you know uh, english media names there are so many you know uh, hindi press, and these really. language press which are fiercely independent there are billions of yeah. you know i mean journalists who are working who are not sold out to bjp or modi look look barka worldwide any democracy you cannot have you know opposition sort of you know boycotting or stonewalling or not having access you know or for the better not you know, engaging, with, engaging with mainstream media a television media i can understand some channel some individual there are prob problems it happens it happened with donald trump also so it happens but you cannot be boycotting it this is so i'm saying there is no thinking you see he is not interacting he is not communicating enough now one of the things that you said was that the congress today doesn't have a cogent ideology and on the other side the bjp has captured multiple ideological spaces hindutva of course nationalism of course but also 
the cult of personality around the prime minister and this perception among people that he's a doer he's not a dynast he uh, he has no children so you know i've met so many voters when i travel ki ye kyu corrupt honge to kabhi corrupt nahi honge kyunki bacche nahi hai people actually believe that where there is no family there is no incentive so rahul gandhi ke bhi bacche nahi hai <laughs> rahul gandhi ke bhi bacche nahi hai but but rahul gandhi is seen as a dynast prime minister is not now that so so there is the personality cult there is hindutva there is nationalism there is the state as a welfare state so you have all of these free rations direct cash benefits and now you have the prime minister reasserting himself as an obc prime minister you have very careful social engineering caste engineering by the bjp strategists my question is what is the ideological space left for the congress to occupy Lot Barkha. If you look at give me, this, give, tell me how. No, no, like first of all, let's be you know very factual. The BJP in two thousand fourteen got thirty one percent of votes. In two thousand nineteen, got thirty eight percent. This time also, see voter and all projecting forty percent vote. But Let they first passed the post system. No, no, I'm not. I'm not disputing that. Of course, no, yeah. no prime minister has got except for Rajiv Gandhi fifty percent mandate. What and that too in nineteen eighty four. And if I'm not wrong, UPA had twenty eight percent vote. Precisely. Yeah. So I have no problems with that. What I'm saying is there are six. 60% of people yeah. who are sort of are are not voting for BJP one reason or the other that's a different thing they're not voting at all or they are they're not voting for the BJP now why is you know Rahul Gandhi not been able to attract them mm-hmm. and the congress uh, as you know historically has had so absence of ideology was its huge asset for instance you look at it could be elastic it could be elastic but does that huh? work in today's time when your opponent has such a defined central ideology barkha you and me were not born 1947 happened we we know that partition of india took place on grounds of religion and there were lot of not only bitterness lot of violence yeah. you know what was the vote percentage of bharti jansang in 1951 election no 3% mm-hmm. three seats in 19 by the time 1971 happened the jansang tally was 21 lok sabha mps what is rahul gandhi saying Yeah. See, you need to come up with an alternative. You cannot be a Janevdari Hindu. You cannot be having all those, you know, the Bhakti Pradeshan and Temple Run and all. If you want to, if you if you have a problem with Rahul uh, with Prime Minister attending a a Pran Pratishta ceremony, you say it so and stick to it. Lose election, that's not. But there will be people. But you cannot be saying that you know, our kameez, your kameez is more dark than yours. <laughs> and this kind of competitive communalism mm. is something that is see but i want to ask you you see we see this problem that in uh, in some of the metros and all uh, you know people when they are renting house they deny uh, you know houses to uh, this thing to people of other community now to are they are, are they just minority to religious Muslims, minority are yes. they, i want to ask you are are they all bjp supporters can rahul gandhi get you know do a sample this thing of 100 congress people living in delhi or mumbai who have rented house their you know accommodation to muslims to, to other community i would say no even if they muslim non hindu to non hindu are they doing it if they are not doing it then there is a need for course correction because that is what mahatma gandhi did he went against the tide that for jawaharlal nehru did see the leadership of jawaharlal nehru was not towering because uh, you know he was a great man and you know he studied there or he was a prime minister of india because he could go against the tide but let's go back in history yeah. okay indira gandhi indira gandhi had a pretty decent channel open with the rss Sorry. right indira gandhi knew how to mix religion into politics when needed and yet be a leader of the masses she knew how to handle this tricky question of religion and politics in a country that is deeply believing so i think that nehruvian consensus or that age where you could keep religion away maybe that phase is over well, i'm not i'm not i'm not look i uh, i am not saying that rahul gandhi should follow jawaharlal nehru's footsteps of course jawaharlal nehru was also religious it's not that he was a totally you look at his handling of sheikh abdullah and several he was also driven by you know vote and nationalist uh, sentiments etc yeah. uh, what i'm saying is you need to have a you know a doctrine a ayodhya doctrine what are you thinking about it religion and politics come up with a formulation and talk to your own people that's what i'm saying the big difference barkha if you are talking about uh, you know hundred hundred samples i have 100 mm. 100 of 100 would uh, you know bjp on a ready on any religious issue would say the same thing 
okay but if you have a take a sample of 100 of congress people on the same emotive issues or so to say religious matters you will see lot of diversity let's so, bring it down to basics what if you weren't deep into politics and you were looking at this dur se what does prime minister modi have that rahul gandhi does not have you see a uh, confidence b uh, you know communication uh, c recognizing what people want i'm again i'm saying you need to ask people that you know what do you want and there are two ways one is to go with the popular sentiment which mr modi is doing and other is to go against the tide which like mahatma gandhi and several others you know did yeah. throughout uh, you know course of history worldwide leaders have gone against the tide and brought people together on that so rahul gandhi is not displaying any of them that like i'm saying there are various leadership models are there so he is not reflecting that so there is no newness there is nothing that excites the congress i mean i mean in the congress socio economic programs etc so he is just walking on a very beaten path one of the points that you have often made is that political correctness is no longer working at the hustings virtue signaling is not working to say as you said ki hamari kameez aapki kameez se safed hai is 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 not a, a ad slogan that is working in electoral politics you need something that people care about emotionally what is that something very simple barka you have seen what happened in uh, in karnataka what happened in uh, uh, in uh, telangana see you start winning state elections yeah and do you see there but they really the... thought they would win madhya pradesh right no, that okay and and we are having this conversation at a time i don't know how this podcast will age well or poorly but we are having this conversation at a time when kamal nath we still don't know what mr kamal nath is going to do big rumors that he was going to walk out also rumors that the bjp eventually did not even want him yeah uh, well uh, all of it may be true what i'm saying is what is the genesis of that okay they lost election because uh, uh, you know rahul gandhi sort of trusted kamal nath bhupesh baghel and to some extent ashok gehlot and uh, you know sort of paid a price in the sense that he was not interventionist the congress central leadership which is fine but post election you see with lot of bitterness with kamal nath happened because of rajya sabha election mm. it is a open secret that rahul gandhi wanted uh, that minakshi natarajan to be made rajya sabha member no minakshi in in madhya pradesh politics some say that she is a kind of you know outsider not outsider in terms because she has won election but she is not very active now this is a problem if rahul gandhi wants his people to get into rajya sabha he should say it so and take ownership you can't be saying no no i am not i you know i am not in power politics and let others come in so the congress lacks again or even a rajya sabha doctrine who should get in hmm. you look at lawyers get it why because they are defending national health case you look at himachal anand sharma was denied ticket for the first time in history uh, outsider i mean he's our friend Manu, abhishek manu singhvi but first time a outsider has come in that uh, you know in himachal as a rajya sabha nominee so what i'm saying is they don't harevo ko nahi dena hai uh, talent ko dena hai acche speaker ko dena i'm me me and barkha dat cannot decide who should get rajya sabha but there should be some consistent consistency if you're just going to get you know 6 7 8 uh, you know uh, uh, rajya sabha seats then it has to be there everything has to be justified so what i'm saying is rahul gandhi uh, for the any it's a simple thing in any organization things have to be very transparent look at look at narendra modi's rajya sabha nominations of course i mean many of them are already in lok sabha but look at the kind of ordinary workers who are getting it uh, in the rajya sabha so the entire rajya sabha is that uh, you know elite kind of thing at one point of time it was called rajiv sabha you know anybody who was close to rajiv gandhi could get in uh, uh, you know in yeah. rajya sabha yeah. but i'm saying that he has to put small small things in place so the question you are asking what should congress do next okay national elections it's very difficult but congress should try to come as close to you know 100 as it can yeah 70 is projected try to you know uh, come uh, you know close to 100 try winning state assembly elections like you know telangana is extraordinary story but nobody is talking about it rahul gandhi himself is not talking about it and then there is a case in andhra now elections but let's, let me hold you right there you raised the example of telangana i was struck by the fact that telangana is an in interesting example of how one of rahul gandhi's key favorite issues is not actually embraced by his chief ministers and i am talking about gautam adani now like rafal was in 2019 adani has been a central issue for rahul gandhi and some of his other opposition colleagues but revanth reddy 
was photographed with members of the Adani group, I think on the very day that Rahul Gandhi had made a blistering attack on Adani, when Ashok Gehlot was Chief Minister of Rajasthan, still in power, again these questions used to be raised that the opposition, Rahul Gandhi is attacking Adani, but Adani has all of these investments in these states. Now, irrespective of whether there are questions or not legitimate around Hindenburg and so on, my point is if your own chief ministers aren't going to implement an issue, why are you so obsessed on it? See, this is a thing, uh, Rahul Gandhi, as I said uh, earlier, Rahul Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, they are not, you know, politicians by choice. And in Rahul's case, it becomes more complicated because he has not held a kind of position of responsibility. He didn't become a minister. We all know Dr. Manmohan Singh, thrice he asked him. And that time, uh, to, become to, a part to, of to, join, to join Council of Ministers, various portfolios were there. He can, could be Why a, did a, he say a minister. Who? I'll, I'll come to it. So he was asked to become minister of state in, uh, in the PMO, uh, in foreign office, in uh, take any of the infrastructure ministry because it would have equipped him, uh, you know, to know how go how governments function, how work is, uh, uh, yeah. you know, uh, is undertaken, etc. But he, because that time also he was very poorly advised. Sonia Gandhi left it to his judgment and he was advised by Digvijay Singh and several others that he Gandhi Parivar ka sadasya mantri nahi banta, wo to pradhan mantri banta hai. Mm. So you will see this, uh, this illusion of grandeur is fed constantly. It's very intoxicating Barkha, you would, I mean me and you, we cannot understand this. It's like much more than a show business, you see, so there's so, you so much. Lie to, you can lie to yourself. So Rahul Gandhi felt, no, you can say you can be in denial. I think let's. We I can't mean, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. I so, mean the same thing. The lying to yourself. Precisely. Is, so no. what? Since he didn't become a you know a kind of a minister and all. First of all, his standing in the middle class. What is Rahul Gandhi? He is just uh, you know uh, you know uh, Rahul uh, you know he's just Rahul Gandhi. Sonia Gandhi's son, Rajiv Gandhi's son, Indira Gandhi's you know grandson, uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's great grandson. That's it. He doesn't have an identity of his own. He may have worked in uh, you know in that monitor group in uh, UK, which was uh, doing financial consultancy, etc. But this is inconsequential. See the, uh, uh, like uh, you know, I'll just tell you a story that uh, there was a minister uh, uh, earlier, and he was part of uh, Narsimha Rao's uh, Congress party. His name was Budhpriya Maurya, and Mr. And that time Narsimha Rao and Arjun Singh were at loggerhead. So one day I asked Mr. Maurya, I said, why you don't back uh, Arjun Singh because he has a agenda of the Tiwari Congress etc. He said, देखिए हमारे अलीगढ़ में कहावत है कि आदमी अपना दामाद और अपना नेता अपने से अच्छा चुनना चाहता है और मैं Arjun Singh ko apne se acha neta nahi manta. So this point I'm saying is that people have a very high expectation of a leader. What did Mr. Modi do? You see, when he became chief minister in 2000, uh, uh, this thing, 2001, and two, after 2002, yeah. he, until 2007, he sold his, this thing that, you know, he's doing a wonderful job in Gujarat, the Gujarat model. Nobody's talking about today. So I'm saying, so Rahul Gandhi doesn't have a story to tell. Now that coming to your point. That no achievement you see, that he doesn't say, ki many oh, kiya, yeah, many kiya. Yeah, so correct. The, so the, the, the relations between, the relationship between industrial houses, businessmen, and politics, politicians, political party is very, I mean, it requires a volume actually. So I can't explain. So even Mahatma Gandhi was heavily dependent on all those, or the you know, Birlas of, of that point of time, freedom of struggle. The British intelligence, which was very good at it, they could never decipher the source of Congress funding. Okay, so Mr. Modi can just breathe easily. Third thing is, so what I'm saying, there has always been a relationship, particularly when you have a, such a corrupt political system where, you know, donations and every, you know, funding is required. So Rahul Gandhi, a lot of politicians, you, you've seen Vishwanath Pratap Singh used to be against all those, you know, industrial houses and all. But Vishwanath Pratap Singh was, you know, a bundle of contradiction. So he would say something and mean something. Now, problem with Rahul Gandhi is that he's just trying to, you know, stick to, you know, principles where he should not be because a chief minister needs, uh, you know, b uh, industrial houses Investment. for the investment. And, I, and I think one, of the, point, basic. one of the points that you always made is attack the politician, but not the businessman, right? Like the, the point is, so, it's so uh, even in a Harshad Mehta scam, it is the government of the day or the politician involved that is put on the mat, not... Now, some people might say, Rashid, you're being too cynical. This is not the idealistic principle to defend. No, no, no. You look at... I'm not saying... You see, it's not about, you know, me and you. It's about, uh, you know, political how political party, you know, functions. Works. Yeah. And one day I was with Ahmed Patel, uh, you know, and something came up. So he was... I could just hear him. So he's saying, Are, ye to bada mushkil hai. you know, it was about Rajasthan and Gautam Adani thing and all. This is where Rahul ka clearance kaise lenke. So imagine a person like... 
Ahmed Patel was really worried that he called up Priyanka. I don't know what happened, but see, he was using Priyanka Gandhi to prevail upon uh, Rahul. Rahul Gandhi to get something done, which uh, Gautam Adani and Ashok, uh, and Ashok Gehlot wanted in a very legitimate se uh, sense in Rajasthan. So there are a lot of things going. On. See the. Barkha, why Rahul Gandhi doesn't realize that, see, his party, that Congress, is being an architect, is a, you know, uh, of economic reforms. Yeah. You see, Manmohan Singh gets a lot of credit. Uh, uh, Dr. Manmohan, oh, sorry, uh, P.V. Narasimha Rao gets a lot of credit. But his own father, uh, Rajiv Gandhi, actually, economic reforms was an idea, a concept uh, of of, uh, of Rajiv Gandhi. Unfortunately, you know, didn't live long enough to carry to it forward. It, yeah. But then that was the thing. So the Congress is not taking ownership of economic reforms, which is a big thing for the Indian middle class and which can fetch a lot of votes. No, but today if they try to take ownership, who's going to try be interested in the historical fact of something? No, no, but I'm saying there are a lot of... So look, that is where I feel that exit of Melin Devra, exit of Jyotir Aditya, exit of several RPN saying, Jitin Prasad, you name it. All of, because they are a connect with the great Indian middle class. Indian middle class still likes Sachin Pilot. Okay, because though he's in Congress. So I'm saying that Indian middle class has not lost touch. In, as late as 2009, the, uh, you know, the Congress won from a lot of urban centers. And so, Manmohan Singh was voted back. Manmohan Singh was voted back. A lot of people, when they say remote control, where was that remote control in 2009? So the point I'm saying is, this is, it is far easy. But Rahul Gandhi's problem is, he's looking at his, you know, developmental economics dissertation in Cambridge, you know, uh, you know, two, we all have studied, we all have done degrees, but those degrees have a very, so he has to be, and that's where emotional intelligence comes in. And he's lacking in that. His interpersonal communication is very weak. And that's, I can give you a reason. Barkha, when Indra Gandhi died, uh, was assassinated, day before, I think day or two days before, there was an attempt to kidnap uh, Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, from outside that Golda Khana, where they were studying inside Columbus, mm -hmm. and uh, this is very school. Now, next, what happened? Uh, after On the 31st of uh, October, I'm not giving a kind of sob story. I'm just telling a statement of fact. The day Indra Gandhi was assassinated, people forgot whoever these two children Arun Nehru got them in the afternoon as you know Indira Gandhi was assassinated around and, uh, uh, in the morning and 3 o'clock they were uh, uh, Arun Nehru picks them up and takes them to Amitabh Bachchan's father's house at the Gulmohar colony and they were uh, you know there and Rajiv Gandhi came from Calcutta and all I don't know when the mm. father, Rahul, uh, when, uh, Rahul Gandhi met uh, 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 Rajiv Gandhi that day from that day onwards, he did not go to school. There was no formal education for him. So he and Priyanka would be at home for, you know, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, formative years where we grow up, we make a lot of uh, friends. You know, uh, friends, we make all kind of, you know, silly mistakes, all kind of things happen. They were just there at home and one tutor after another would come. So I... And then, of course, he came to college, St. Stephen's College, briefly. He was, uh, you know, was uh, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, on the, on the uh, shooting quota. On the shooting quota, he was admitted. But he had uh, my 60 content, plus percentages. You were ahead of me at college. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and but then, very briefly. Very briefly, I think six, eight months. And, and even and then, there was such a furor over his security coming. Precisely. The quota on which he'd been admitted and so oh, on. So a lot of controversy, a lot of... But he didn't have proper, you know, college atmosphere that you and me, you know, grew yeah. up. Now, after that, and all his days in... Uh, whenever in Florida or in Cambridge he studied he has, uh, apparently under some pseudo name not a normal thing I think this is all affected his you know personality in a way so therefore and this assassination of Indira Gandhi assassination of Rajiv Gandhi so that trust thing comes in and then one very important thing I think when he joined politics he was to be a you know sort of backbencher mm. and pick things in opposition yeah. and Congress sort of you know UPA came to power so he could not find a role for himself Sonia Gandhi did not groom him uh, the way Indra Gandhi had groomed first uh, uh, Sanjay Gandhi and, and then Rajiv, Rajiv Gandhi. So grooming was very different. And I am I I have a feeling and I have uh, some information that you know he spent a lot of time with Arun Nehru, who was sort of uh, you know the two families had come together and they were very like you know normal relatives mm. and he told uh, Rahul Gandhi a lot of stories about Congress and how the Congress and this is a lot of truth in also how they were like kind of you know 
parasites and how i mean those stories who was about, the parasite uh, the, the congressman how they manipulated rajiv gandhi and got uh, because remember rajiv gandhi period was very promising and uh, it had lot of delivery also but uh, uh, somehow it is of course someone should do a book and it's very poorly you know sort of advertised mm. uh, so therefore uh, i think uh, arun nehru uh, uh, told Ra- uh, rahul gandhi lot of things about lot of people and lot of people in who are alive or who have you know died so in our fight continue, continue so rahul gandhi then. is not you know when it comes to the congress organization this is my view he is not as you know uh, accommodating as his father uncle mother uh, grandmother war but you know this reminds me of a story that after the 2014 decimation priyanka gandhi is at a cwc meeting and it is reported that she really loses her temper and she says that all of you around this table are to blame for what happened and then you join that with a rally i think i don't remember if it was raibareli or amethi where she actually blames the congress workers do you remember that mm-hmm. now how can you as a leader even if it's true like let's say something goes wrong in this interview while we were talking right now we had to stop the camera twice and there was some technical problem i will never come out and say you know yeah. oh th- this is a problem and hold my team responsible as the leader of the team i will always be responsible right so i remember that story about priyanka which you know you would know it better how does a leader blame their team well i think look when there is a so much of dependency that is what i'm saying you look at uh, uh, the history of congress story of congress i would say where there is a very huge you know dependence so every time there is election it is sonia gandhi rahul gandhi priyanka gandhi or out in the field look at the regional satraps so you look at bupesh baghel he failed look at kamal nath he failed look at uh, you know uh, ashok gelot he But failed gandhi is also failed No, no, Gandhi has failed, but they, they should have won. I mean, it was a state election. Point I'm saying is that look, we started this conversation with the thing that I said we need to make an assessment, a fair assessment, whether Gandhis are failing the Congress or Congress is failing Gandhis. So, what is your answer? To that? So, my answer is that I think the uh, you know the Congress people, uh, the entire chunk of Congress pa- party is full of lazy people. They okay. don't want to. They have found a very you know this Ganesh Parikarma. They have found a very easy way out that you just you know. Suck up to them, and they will get you position, power, and maybe even governments. Now they are not being able to get uh, get results. So no member of Nehru Gandhi family has failed. Jawaharlal Nehru was prime minister till the last day. Uh, Indira Gandhi, though he she lost, but there was a great comeback, and she was a prime minister. Rajiv Gandhi was on a comeback trail. Our Congress government was formed after his assassination. Sonia Gandhi, you look at her uh, thing that you know, fourteen two thousand four to fourteen, she got them power, uh, whichever way uh, yeah. coalition. Yeah. And Rahul Gandhi. So that I'm saying. So there here comes Rahul Gandhi, who's a failure. Now the Congress does not know how to deal with a failure. The Gandhis also do not know how to deal with a failure. If Rahul Gandhi moves out, assuming let's just academic exercise. Is, then Priyanka goes, Sonia goes, everything goes. So therefore, and Congress people are not prepared for it. No matter, yeah, I said you know, happy to be unhappy, but they are. So they basically need an advertisement. So you're saying Rahul Gandhi is the first Nehru Gandhi mem- family member who's a political failure. I mean, I'm not saying. What else are saying so? Uh, so, far, so this is a, so far. So, but and he understands that. That's why he doesn't want so to fix himself. I mean, the BJP he also won. moved from two seats to eight seats. It was many decades of therefore. And in people. defense of Rahul Gandhi, he is still trying, and he is not positioning himself. It is other. Yeah. It is like Surya Bala. It is Venu Gopals of the world who are projecting him. He is not saying it. So he can be accused of defending, having a kind of throwing a a kind of a security ring around uh, you know Jairam Ramesh and several others. so that's the thing that's a poor leadership i would say but then see that i'm saying the entire thing is a very tragic the congress could not live without uh, you know gandhis you must remember that it's like that ajit joke no yeah you know the ajit liquid, joke ah uh, liquid and oxygen tell me <laughs> ki wo oxygen hame jeene nahi dega aur mande nahi dega basically yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. it is that it is it is the u2 song we can't live with or without you so the, so i mean and my i mean if i were to advise gandhi gandhi can take a you know clean break or one of them or two of them can take a clean break from uh, you know from politics the so congress will survive or congress may become abcd of it but that will happen but at least they would not get that blame you look at sonia gandhi at you know at age of 70 she actually wanted to retire that would have been 2016 or so but yeah. all those people they came around and who are the people half of them are not in congress i mean i would say even golam nabi azad 
so all and when 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 gandhi say this or somebody on behalf of gandhi say ki dekho ye azad ko to humne ye sab which is factually correct but it sounds very bad in today's world because they look at it sounds very patronizing or even case of kamal nath etc because after after all whatever gulam nabi did uh, was in his capacity individual capacity and gulam nabi will tell you the story that he tried very hard for example to keep a himanta biswa in the congress camp and that that the, the gandhis were not interested in 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 actually keeping him well was a uh, well i have also read that book so it was one of the gandhis wanted himanta to come in other gandhi didn't want and mr azad played you know both role when uh, he was asked to do it he did it when he was asked not to do it so he didn't do it so that is my problem when you pick up like you to talk about the you know no, dog biscuit reference to himanta yeah let's tell that story that yeah. since we are talking about the stories of the congress the story of himanta himanta tells that so, story often i went to meet rahul gandhi instead of talking to me he was busy feeding biscuits to his dog piddi Well, <laughs> I, I think I told you uh, that Sita Ram Kesi also had a dog, Ruchi. In the Pomeranian. Pomeranian. The the day uh, you know uh, Sita Ram Kesi she died, Ruchi also died. But anyway, I am witness to it, Barkha. And uh, you. No, nothing against dogs. I love no, no. animals. No, no, no. Nothing. I am talking about dog, biscuit, dogs, and Congress president. So I here I was there sitting with. Cong- so people didn't know how to please uh, Sita Ram Kesi because he was a very you know frugal eater, and also they would bring so uh, you know from Khan Market they would bring do- dog biscuit. Biscuits. Now, Kesri Ji being Kesri Ji, uh, could not distinguish between dog biscuits and the biscuits which are you know consumed by others. So um, I have seen, I witnessed to it that Mr. Kesri would you know offer those biscuits dog to the biscuits. Uh, to the people who were there and Congress people. I don't want to name them. They would pick it up yeah. and they will curse them later on. Yeah. So I am saying this is also nobody complained. I think when Mr. Raj, Rahul Gandhi was fiddling with dog or offering you know biscuits to his dog, uh, when did what did it happen first time? it must have happened 10 times when himanta or someone like him tolerated it and that is my problem with these people because these are stories i know what went wrong between himanta and uh, rahul gandhi what went wrong? i know no, i cannot say it Why? but no no i'm saying these are all very you know these are very personal things there nothing to do but we we pick up issues that one saying history and story but as i write it one day what have what went wrong between rahul gandhi and himanta biswa sharma it's also a fascinating story but point i'm saying is it's all it's labeled now rahul gandhi is not communicating his side of story never comes out yeah. he maybe so himanta what was himanta's problem himanta's problem was uh, tarun gogoi tarun gogoi did not want to you know did not want to give space uh, to give himanta, himanta. no yeah. gandhi is that they get told you about prana mukherjee or mamta banerji and pv narsimha rao all of them but gandhi is are taking lot of uh, you know flack also for all these things that they did not do and that's where poor communication none of them have a media advisor they don't communicate they don't give interviews it's far easy to meet let's say uh, amit shah or uh, you know narendra modi or anyone else uh, then then but they would, they would say as they often say that rahul gandhi holds press conferences the prime minister has never held a press conference that would be their counter press conference in press conference of course press conference is a very uh, you know structured thing and prime minister should hold press conference rahul gandhi holds press conferences he you know accepts all questions yeah. and responds that's all very good thing but i am saying that his side of thing you cannot be saying things in a press conference so i am saying that new modern age all these tools are there like he's using social media at one point of time he said uh, you know twitter is a fad urban fad and next time you know all his politics is on twitter yes. so i am saying there is a need for balance look barkha it's congress is going through a very lean patch and there lot nothing is is working for them Uh, whatever they do and you know nobody left the congress and that's how i feel that in 2014 ideally there should have been a big split uh, nobody left and people left by their own con- uh, you know convenience so unlike indira gandhi rahul gandhi sonia gandhi did not have a luxury of getting rid of you know so to say the dead wood yeah. and they do not know who's going to you know go next but they don't issue any show cause notice to anybody there is no congress disciplinary committee uh you know uh, so i'm saying if they get to know about somebody they can act proactively uh, you know in nutshell you see one why can, is the bjp interested in taking these people from the congress uh, the bjp a, that has always attacked dynasty now the prime minister reframed the definition of dynasty in his parliament speech and he said the point is not that two people from the same family should not be in politics right? that is after thought yeah 
But the point is that if you look at Milind Deora, Jitin Prasad, R P H. Really, so there are two sides. One is, of course, to you know, uh, whenever the change comes, uh, we have seen whenever there is a, a powerful leader, powerful leader is always replaced by some kind of you know coalition uh, coming together of various regional parties and others, and they form uh, you know uh, governments, etc. I think Prime Minister is aware of it. The Prime Minister is also wants to give because Congress has a lot of historical baggage, so they want to uh, you know. Uh, Every time there is a split in Congress or some—I mean, not a split in the sense that anybody leaves the Congress, it brings all that kind of media spotlight and it shows Congress in a very poor light. So he doesn't want Congress to regroup like it did a fantastic job, I would say, in not only in Karnataka but more so in Telangana. Mm. So, so Prime Minister, a second point, Barka, which is very important, which still, if you look at the Prime Minister's cabinet today, it's not very different from you know, so to say, in terms of diversity. Uh, what was Jawaharlal Nehru's cabinet? Nehru had a very, you know, kind of ideal, you know, thoughts when he brought his first, uh, you know, cabinet, which mm-hmm. had Ambedkar and uh, 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 this Baldev Singh, uh, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, and a lot of people who were not part of uh, uh, Congress, uh, 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 Congress fold. Mm-hmm. So to make a representative, what is Prime Minister doing? He's also doing the same thing. There are so many technocrats have come in. I mean, imagine all the important ministries are not held by people who are not traditionally, you know, politicians, uh, politicians or not traditional BGP, not you know so to say Foreign Sangeet, affairs, Sangeet. Okay. basically Jay Shankar Hadi yeah, yeah. Puri besides many of them so that's also the, he's putting it in a different he's packaging in a different language but it is very similar to uh, you know what Jawaharlal Nehru was right so he understands the diversity of India he understands talent he understands you mean, how difficult you mean Modi Precisely. So, Mr. Modi's cabinet is very is not very different from in terms of purely in terms of diversity. Again, I would say the first cabinet of Jawaharlal Nehru. Except on the non-Hindu question. No, no. That is, of course, the political things would, of course, be there. They are very different. Look at the how both them of them have have written a book, so I can analyze it. How they are using Bollywood. Mm. Uh, you know the power of soft power of Bollywood. Both of them, Nehru did it his own way, and uh, Modi is doing Let's it. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Nehru, because not many know how Nehru used Bollywood. Well, the entire this thing of production houses of that time, of Bival, uh, Roy to uh, Mahbub and all, they were very much deeply influenced by, uh, you know, uh, Nehruvian uh, ideas and ideals. And Nehru uh, used to tell Prithviraj uh, Kapoor was his or the first member of Bollywood person in Rajya Sabha. Mm-hmm. And he used to use uh, Prithviraj Kapoor and his theatre, Prithvi theatres to, you know, uh, uh, communicate uh, with uh, maybe of those uh, uh, sort of South Asian or South uh, East Asian powers etc. And uh, once uh, I remember there was a conversation uh, that Nehru went to uh, uh, USSR and he met Joseph Stalin and Joseph Stalin uh, kept talking about you know Avara and Raj Kapoor. Mm-hmm. So Nehru had not seen that movie so he came back he called Prithvi Raj Kapoor and he says what is your son is become a vagabond. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph was talking about it. <laughs> Joseph Stalin said no no that's a film. So what I'm saying is Nehru understood uh, you know the importance of uh, cinema at that point of time in terms of you look at Mother India all uh, though because I mean a lot of movies were uh, influenced by you know Nehru and Nehru used to go to uh, you know uh, uh, you know shoot film shooting he would wait I mean there was in Dilip Kumar's book there is an account that uh, this person uh, Nehru walks in in Madras uh, Chennai and uh, Vijayanti Mala had told everyone that Chavalan Nehru has come to see her and whereas uh, you know the moment Nehru walked in he said oh, Yusuf come and all and he was very friendly with so I mean that was Dilip Kumar's yeah. own way of saying that how uh, you know uh, uh, Nehru gave far more importance to him than to Vijayanti <laughs> but I'm saying, and look at Modi, Swachh Bharat, all kind of thing. You know, though you see all those film actors taking selfie. So he's using it in a very judicious because that's a very easy way. Yeah. Of course, there are Kagna and others who are having some other kind of you know agenda. But the thing is, understanding the medium. Rahul Gandhi is not doing it. Uh, you know, and me, uh, you know, uh, uh, both of us know. Uh, you know, Shah Rukh Khan is, is known to Rahul Gandhi in a very personal, in a very friendly way. Priyanka Gandhi, um, but the no, you know, no communication at all. No. You but you see, you see, the stars would not be willing today. Not come they on. would not be willing today to be. No, no, this is unfair. Do th- I don't unfair think. Do I don't think the stars would be willing to get embroiled in active electoral politics. Well, there's so many of them are itching to actually. You, you need to you and so many of the, of them are doing it on their own accord. 
you look at you know kamla hasan meeting arvind kejriwal i mean the congress is not congress has rajiv shukla congress has lot of channels and i'm not saying this is to pitting uh, you know uh, kind of uh, uh, you know bjp versus congress and i agree maybe because of that financial implications and all bollywood would not be but i am saying there is a need to have some kind of functional relationship i was coming to it actually when you started talking about so the congress used to have lot of congress and gandhi family and congress leader used to have lot of lines of communication with for instance uh, film stars not only film personalities or you know producers yeah. and maker not just uh, this thing uh, uh, with this uh, uh, with bollywood with regional this thing also dasari narayan rao was a minister in uh, in uh, under manmohan singh coal minister actually Yes, I remember that. I, I But why we are on the subject so, of the film industry, and you you have said let's speak about the stories of Congress. The one thing that nobody knows for sure is what was the reason for the rupture between the Gandhis and the Bachchans. And this is an important political question even today because if you notice, Rahul Gandhi goes to Amethi, he makes a speech where he talks about the Ayodhya Pran Pratishtan, and he says Amitabh Bachchan and Ashwarya Rai was pre- were present. Ashwarya Rai was not present. Jaya Bachchan. continues to be on the other side of the ideological divide with uh, the 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 samajwadi party and veiled in secrecy some say it has something to do with bofors nobody knows for sure this rupture that took place between two of the most famous families of india what can you tell us about this <laughs> you are provoking me to say a lot yes can. of course that's my job to, no but i i since i have uh, you know kind of uh, try to study it in a semi i mean in a journalistic sense i see it's a story of you know human failings uh, the kind of and it's a tale of actually friendship uh, i i still assume that amitabh bachchan ajita bachchan would have lot of uh, respect uh, uh, for sonia gandhi and the other way round but in children of course it's law of diminishing yeah. returns such in फ्रॉमिटी families would go uh, you know together and they were of very supportive of uh, of indira gandhi so indira gandhi had lot of admiration i think that two uh, you know uh, daughter in law that uh, being jaya and ramolla Bach- uh, ramolla bachchan they obviously you know had their own sort of sense of independence and all they were not reverential towards uh, so to say nehru gandhi family this was a one uh, uh, spot the lot of things took place uh, those things that may interest uh, you know your uh, uh, viewers and listeners is that see uh when the when priyanka gandhi wedding took place uh, it was like chat mangni but bia kind of thing with uh, this uh, and that wedding took place uh, just uh, i think there was two days gap between shweta bachchan's wedding with this nanda so imagine at that time house of nandas and uh, the buradabad and ne buradabad ka bartan wala okay hmm. so like somebody said and there people carry tales i have no independent way of verifying but uh, somebody made a comment from uh, uh, bachchan's family saying ki are sonia ne kaha bartan wala में शादी कर दी एंड यू नो सो देर इज ऑलवेज कंपेरिजन इट हैपेंस इन इंडियन सोसाइटी सो द वेडिंग टू प्लेस एंड ऑल द सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो बिग शॉट्स ऑफ पीपल हु मैटर्ड वेंट फॉर दिस ऑफ कोर्स दिस दिस बच्चन वेडिंग नंदाज एंड बच्चन सेट कम टूगेदर एंड वेरी फ्यू केम टू यू नो प्रियंका वेडिंग नो बडी वॉज देयर आई थिंक अमिताभ केम इन एंड दैट वॉज देयर एंड लॉर्ड ऑफ कंपेरिजन वॉज देयर देन दर वॉज द इशू ऑफ जन्म कुंडली समबडी दि से दैट यू नो बच्चन गॉट अ जन्म कुंडली मेड फॉर जन्म पत्री मेड सोनिया गांधी जन्म पत्री शोड अ वेरी ब्लीक पोलिटिकल फ्यूचर सो लेटर ऑन समन से दिस वॉज अ कॉन्स्पेरेसी कि यू डोंट यू नो यू डोंट शाइन इन पॉलिटिक्स लॉर्ड ऑफ बच्चन आर वेरी पॉलिटिकल इन फैक्ट दर इज अ शेयर पैशन दैट्स अमिताभ एंड जया दे आर लाइक अदर देन बींग वेरी फाइन एक्टर्स एंड ऑल बट दे एक्चुअली इंजॉय पॉलिटिक्स आई फॉर इंस्टेंस बिलीव दैट आई मीन जया बच्चन सर्टली सीम्स टू बट अमिताभ वेरी पॉलिटिकल ऑल इज लाइफ इज बीन पॉलिटिकल 
okay since the age of 3 4 you know he was friends with rajiv and sanjay etc of course that was friendship but then a uh, friendship with uh, rajiv gandhi that brought him in politics he was there in fact that was a singular act that led to the downfall his resignation from uh, uh, alabad lok sabha because there was a by election and that gave a confidence to the opposition that rajiv gandhi can be defeated So that led to that. Uh, decline. So you don't think it was Bofors? No, no, I think it was. You don't think Bofors caused the rupture between the Bachchan and no. the Gandhis? And you don't think it's that when ABCL Bachchan's company actually went uh, kaput and he went through a great financial difficulty? There's also talk that you know the Gandhis could have helped. But did well, how? We don't know. We don't power. know. No, see, neither that family has ever spoken about this on record. Like, these are all these. These are all speculations. The decision to set up ABCL etc. was Amitabh's own, uh, you know, decisions. And uh, the fact that the Gandhis were not, you know, so to say, partners. So Gandhis were politically also not in a position because the time period you're talking about, the United Front government had come in. It was earlier Narasimha Rao government. I don't think it is so much, you know, its financial. It is that see, we have very high expectation. They used to call. All Rahul and Priyanka used to. No, not financial. Amitabh, but that in their Mahi. time, in their time of difficulty, the Gandhis didn't stand by them. Precisely. So I think Mr. Uh, I think Amitabh Bachchan had a view that Sonia Gandhi should not join politics, and this would be a very uh, kind of I would say uh, you know selfless, a very sincere uh, thing. And then, but later on, of course. she had a sort of you know political pain and she may have thought that this kind of advice may have been motivated so yeah. i'm saying lot of people who are in their uh, sort of uh, uh, you know social circles have created lot of misunderstanding and there were very high expectations was there and as i just said lot of comparison uh, the role of bahus in this yeah. matter all these things have complicated and uh, of course people do compare uh, you know there lot of comparisons are are there so all these things have led to and nobody could intervene and teji bachchan at one point of time i mean unfortunately she fell ill if she was active she would have intervened and mind you ajitab's relations with uh, you know sonia gandhi or her children are not that bad as the case of even uh, today uh, even today so all and the, the i mean the relations between i think the two brothers are also not best nobody talks about it because they were the you know they were best of buddies also and they helped each other yeah. i mean uh, all kind of things had happened You spoke about an eviction notice sent to Harivan Shirai Bachchan uh, to prevent proximity between uh, the Bachchans and the Gandhis. Let's talk about another house, Ten Janpath. Uh, and towards the end, I want to talk about Sonia Gandhi's move to the Rajya Sabha. You made the pro- point on one of our programs that it's also about the house. Explain that. Yes, because uh, you look at the you know Gandhis, it looks very uh, odd uh, that they don't have a house of their own. What do you mean they don't have a so, house? So they own? had, they had. I'll explain it. They, uh, they will own property. Their assets show that the, the, the children have had. No, no. They had uh, uh, Anand Bhavan. They had, and Anand Bhavan used to be the headquarter of Congress Party till uh, you know time of uh, independence etc. Yeah. Then it moved to Delhi. They donated it. Now Jawaharlal Nehru all his life lived in a uh, you know in a government bungalow. So was Indira Gandhi, and even Indira Gandhi was. I mean, when she was not a prime minister between seventy seven to eighty, she lived at this Mumbai Yunus. house at that 12 uh, this thing now rahul gandhi uh, rajiv gandhi had a uh, farm house in at mehroli yeah. i think now it's sold off and all but it was not at that point in time it was not ready to be there so the gandhis have lived uh, all the time in their you know in the government offices but priyanka gandhi reported precisely. with her husband as a house precisely in so gurgaon in gurgaon but it becomes very so she has taken a house at sujan singh Ma- uh, marg now which is in central delhi very close to khan market etc because in political uh, terms you know no political worker would be going to gurgaon because the people what they are you know uh, so they want to be in sort of saint lutians delhi in 15 minutes time they can be here and they are close to parliament or functional it's not a status symbol mm. so i think house thing is very important i remember i meeting jyotirindra sindhya when he was uh, out of power and he had a house at uh, just opposite i think gargi college and it was a nice apartment but he said look where i am staying you know mm. and of course a lot of people say that one of the reasons which influenced him uh, of course i would say again rajya sabha election was there because in that rajya sabha election of 2020 uh, he should have been a number one candidate for the congress 
and digvijay singh became number one candidate at number two candidate there was a doubt whether that person would win or not the sonia gandhi out of genuine concern may have said oh you go and elected uh, get elected from chatisgarh so uh, uh, jyotiraditya felt that you know look first of all i have been denied chief minister's post b i am in rajya right, right, sabha now she is saying go and contest from another state yeah. so that and he may not have said it in a very pronounced way but that all things happened i am saying uh all in gulam nabi azad's case also house matters he still continues to live in that house so this house so becomes very critical in this case the one of the reasons that she anticipated she didn't want to con- she moved to rajya sabha quickly in your opinion is to keep ten janpath yes one of one of the because it's a illusion but i'm seeing all of them have i mean see chen danpath is a very important you know sort of say political house in delhi if i ask you the which is the five important places in delhi you know in terms of politically then you will mention one of them so therefore it is not easy to just pack your bags and go to you know gurgaon or noida and live there it's not an easy thing to do and when you have so much of uh, you know uh, i mean uh, people are coming and telling you oh, get elected from himachal Get elected from Karnataka. Get elected from uh, you know this, and of course there are health reasons and several security issues yeah. very important. The offices, if you go to Ten Janpat, a lot of structures have come in. So you need to have that. I mean, Rahul Gandhi, uh, to for your, I mean, uh, you may be knowing, he has not moved back to that uh, uh, to Tugla Crescent House. Why? Uh, maybe I mean somebody may have told him that you know there may have been a lot of surveillance in place now. Because you know he vacated house for between uh, three months. When he got disqualified as a precisely. Yeah. Now in that there would be a lot of equipment may have been there. So I mean this is my conjecture. Nobody is talking about all these things happen. So house is very important. ये रोटी कपड़ा मकान मतलब पॉलिटिकली आल्सो इट इज ना आई वाज इन द वीएस नायपोर रोड अ हाउस फॉर मिस्टर बिस्वास नाउ वी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ हाउस फॉर मिसेस गांधी लास्ट क्वेश्चन योगेंद्र यादव बिफोर ही बिकेम a supporter even a participant in the bharat jodo yatra used to say famously the congress must die for the congress to revive or the congress must die for the opposition to revive today because you know there hasn't been a split as such there hasn't been a mutiny of the kind we've seen historically take place do you believe that the congress has to die before it can revive Well, I don't think Congress will die because it's an idea that has lot of takers in no, India. No, I mean the Congress in this form. I don't no, need the idea of the no, Congress. No, look, Congress needs to uh, politically reform itself. Its uh, you know leadership structure has to change. And look at Barkha, the irony of it. The person you are quoting, uh, you must say Yogendra Jatav, is a very fine political commentator. He has become a, one of the biggest you know informal advisor of Rahul Gandhi. So, person imagine who was predicting death of Congress, who who was you know. Uh, saying that the congress must die is is the one who's trying very hard to revive the party hmm. uh, you know it this is, is it is very ironic right. but, 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 but everyone has a right to live and learn and yeah. mr yogen jadav is living and learning so if he's not come to rajya sabha that's fine but it's a it's a fine thing but i am seeing again the influence of uh, advisors see in and that's where i think rahul gandhi is very different from his mother grandmother great grandfather etc because you look at indira gandhi how she uh, you know in a way manipulated the left particularly the cpi and uh, when she was like she needed their support ideological she wanted a position paper all those you know veranda yeah. boys uh, that were uh, mentioned at that point time chand shekhar and so many of them uh, socialist uh, people uh, they were all like you know uh, discarded mm-hmm. but indira gandhi did it in her own terms so indira gandhi was ideologically neutral and she used all the right left centrist positions to enhance her uh, you know her own, her her own own unfortunately fortune. and even to i mean the diminishing way sonia gandhi also did it the way she used you know the left parties uh, that we period we saw uh, you know they were supporting then they were not supporting all the prakash karat and all nobody went clean i mean look at abdullah look at mayawati uh, bulam singh yadav she used all of them very judiciously now when it comes to rahul gandhi he seems to be more influenced by the left because it is sitaram yachuri Uh, 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 Yogendra Yadav and several others who are influencing him. So all those people, the st- see, they are not stakeholders. You look at uh, uh, Jairam Ramesh; he has not won an election. You look at Surjewala; lost two, you know, assembly elections. 
uh, and uh, you look at uh, 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 yogendra yadav all those people uh, kesi venugopal they are not people who are you know fighting elections or winning elections so therefore if he is getting influence i don't blame his advisors i blame him which is that you know buck must stop there where Absolutely. the leadership is so this is a this is a problem but i think it is problem but problem that cannot be you know tackled i look at i we were got into bollywood actually i wanted to make a point see the congress always had several lines of communications with various you know shankaracharya the religious gurus and all those uh, you know modern uh, new age even people yeah. like shri shri and all but now there is nothing so the congress does not have a kind of uh, this critical mass and therefore i am saying they don't have this thing with the various wo jo hoti hai na those sabhas we call it uh, brahman sabha agarwal samaj this samaj that samaj i think congress is not you know communicating and it's not just media alone and yeah. that is where so their point of view is not articulated understood you see uh, just to give example 24 akbar road does not even have a library A small yeah. thing, significant, but yeah. yeah. you, if you don't have a library, you have no sense of your own history. Your own history. Oh, your own history. You are always running down people. Well, Rashid, we could talk for hours, but as, uh, on the subject of Twenty Four Akbar Road not having a library, they could certainly benefit from your multiple books on the Congress and on Indian politics. And we're looking forward to the next one. Thank you so much. Thank This has been a fascinating, such a pleasure, Varga. Fascinating yeah. conversation. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs>